Good morning, everybody, and welcome to NIDA's virtual open day. My name is Nicholas Day, and I'm here to talk to you about the three-year Bachelor of Fine Arts in Scenic Construction and Technologies. But before I start that, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which NIDA stands. We acknowledge the Bidjigal and Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and we pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. So what do we do? Graduates of the three-year Bachelor of Fine Arts in Cine Construction and Technologies create the environments in which performances take place. These might be on a stage in a theatre, they could be in a film set, it could be an event for live events, it could be an art installation. And the nature of these environments can vary greatly from one job to another. I'm just going to share my screen for a second. They could be a muddy roadway like this one for um, uh, Waiting for Goddard. All these sets I'm going to show you were made by NIDA students for the NIDA play production program. It could be a muddy roadway like this or it could be a multi-level steel construction such as this one for Marat Saad. It could be uh, slick, moving scenic pieces for this uh, musical Starstruck that was produced in the Parade Theatre. Or they could be something like a revolving multi-story New York tenement for Roberto Zucco. Whatever the director and the designer may require to help support the story. So the process of building sets can draw on many different skills and knowledge and many different materials and processes. You could start by building a steel structure on which um, a timber shaped plywood form is uh, constructed. And then on top of that, you might lathe pieces of plywood to create an undulating surface and then apply hard pool noodles like this on top. And then a bit of muslin and some paint. And then you might, so you've created a um, sand dune in this instance. Um, so the director might say, well, that's wonderful, but what we'd like to do now is we'd like to make this sand dune split in half and say a volcano erupt out of the middle of it. So that requires a different set of skills. So you take off your structural hat and put on your mechanical engineering hat and start dreaming up ways of splitting the landscape apart and then with hydraulics or winches uh, lift the volcano up through it. And these mechanisms will also require control and safety systems so that you then need to put on your electrical engineering and coding hat. Um, and then over the top of that, you'll be negotiating with designers and directors, ensuring your vision and their vision are all convergent. And it's all going to happen within budget and the time resources. So how do we go about preparing somebody for this kind of career? Now, the first year of set construction technologies is our foundation year. So we have your materials and structures, which is foundation skills in timber and steel fabrication. We have stage machinery in which we sort of start off with basic um, physics of moving things around, um, applied force and purchase systems, etc. Rigging for the stage. So we look at suspension of scenery on stage and flying systems on stage. Uh, CAD drafting, of course, we need to kind of describe what we're going to do to the, uh, our workshop collaborators. Freehand drawing, because the first time, the first thing a lot of uh, set constructors and technicians do when they start a conversation with a designer is pull out a piece of paper and a pen and go, does it look something like this and try and sketch it? So we do a little bit of freehand drawing. Project management is important. We need to kind of work out how long things are going to take, how much it's going to cost, when we can kind of deliver things within a time frame. Risk management and health and safety. So that's obviously important when we start talking about moving big, heavy pieces of scenery around on stage um, with actors and everybody else um, choreographed around it. So that's an important aspect. Venue architecture is a study of venues and, and what to expect when you go to different kinds of venues, such as proscenium much theatres, um, studio theatres, sound stages, public halls, whatever. 
And then we have production A and production B. So there's two production periods, one in the first semester and one in the second semester, where we make five shows over those uh, periods. And as a first year, you'll be working as a set assistant under the supervision of a third year student who will be either the set constructor or the technical director of the show. So um, that's our first year. And then moving on to second year, the second year is our studio year. So it's about developing the skills that you've learned in that first year. So the applied design is a hypothetical production exercise where you get given a brief as you might have, as you get given plans, like a direct, like a designer may kind of give you in the industry. And from that, you create all the workshop drawings, all the costings, all the work breakdowns, all the WHS material, everything you'd need to do to actually sort of place this show on stage, um, except actually make it as a hypothetical. Uh, installation and supervision is a project where we sort of put you in contact with a fine arts practitioner and you go about creating an installation or an exhibition with them either creating pieces of that artwork or installing that artwork into an environment we've done work with uh, Sydney Contemporary and um, various other places um, we've done work for uh, Vivid in Martin Place etc so and that just gives you um, a slightly different sort of resolution to theatre in kind of building and obviously fine artists have kind of a different kind of practice to the uh, theatre practitioners. So it gives you both an idea of the workflow in those two industries and uh, that difference in resolution to the actual object. Uh, technical writing and presentation we, um, is, a pro is, a, is a class where you talk about, it's, it's about writing, it's about instructional writing, it's about writing material to then uh, present to organisations that you might be um, asking for money, you might be doing a pitch to a production company for your solution to kind of their production problem. So it's about that instructional kind of writing and then you work with some of our um, tutors from corporate performance with just presentation techniques and how to stand up in front of a bunch of people and um, make yourself clear. Uh, stage machinery too, a bit more advanced stage machinery leading on from the first year. So we start looking at um, hydraulic actuators, um, multi sort of um, making machines involve more than one axis of movement. Um, and then there's rigging for the stage two, which again, a little bit more involved. We start looking at ground based rigging, people hanging off buildings, all that kind of special effects -y kind of rigging. Uh, flying people, etc. Uh, and also we start electrical engineering. So uh, obviously you don't come out of here with an electrical, electrical, uh, electrical engineering uh, credentials, but we like to fit our students up with a, enough knowledge and vocabulary so that when you go out into the industry, you'll be able to kind of look at problems, specify what kind of actuators you might be requiring to use to a problem, and then have the vocabulary to then talk with electrical engineers and, and people about the finer details of those systems. And so you, we started off with um, atomic theory and then sort of ran through, you know, um, power, voltage, uh, resistance, capacitance, inductance, all those words. And then um, that sort of then ranges into power distribution and generation. So we look at scenarios where you might be, for instance, putting a stage in a festival, you might be out in the bush with a music festival, or you could be at the race course with rock and roll, or you might be uh, doing a, 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 an Easter show or something like that. And so how to go about looking at those kinds of environments, um, looking at what power is available, how you might get uh, distribute, distribute that power around those kinds of um, events. Um, and, uh, and then if you don't have enough power on site, what kind of generators and things you might need to facilitate that. Um, and then we'll also do, that uh, goes on to data distribution and control, which is then we look at controlling these systems. So how do you kind of get data around a stage to control the winch over there, the, the uh, hydraulic or pneumatic actuators over here, um, and computers and a bit of, a bit of um, coding and how we go about writing code, whether it be uh, PLC 
or say um, C plus for Arduino type systems and things like that. So I had to go about controlling the machines we're kind of making in those stage machinery uh, aspects of the course. And then uh, I think rigging for stage two is in there twice. So um, uh, we'll go into third year. And then third year is the integration year. So third year, we kind of get all the knowledge that we've learned over the previous two years and integrate them into, some, uh, into a couple of outcomes. The first one being a masterwork whereby you get some budget and a fair deal of time to, uh, in the first instance, research um, a build or some uh, that you of an aspect of the um, domain that you, you're kind of particularly interested in. You have a couple of years to kind of think about what that might be. And then basically a semester to research and develop your approach to how you're going to go about doing it. And that can be a rigging problem, a structural problem, a mechanical problem, um, a new um, process that could be uh, far reaching. I mean, we're pretty open to kind of what people do. Um, there's also some professional practice in that first semester. So we look at just running yourself as a business and we look at, you know, you know all the sort of uh, responsibilities of a, of a sole trader when you kind of go out into the industry. You might be sort of self-employed, a lot of people do. And what legal frameworks and what much you need to be able to be cognizant of to um, survive out there with tax and how to run yourself as a business. Um, and also how to, if you are a, become a generative artist, you know how to go about getting money from organisations and then how to uh, acquit yourself at the end of it, what sort of paperwork and whatnot they'll be requiring at the end. So, so that kind of sits you up to sort of then go out into the industry. Uh, then the masterwork studio is then the realisation of that masterwork research you've done in the beginning of the year. So you've got some time there to actually build the physical objects um, uh, or you know, demonstrations that you might need to do to, um, uh, to illustrate uh, the outcome of that research. And then observation and industry practice is an industry internship or a secondment whereby you look at the industry and choose a company that you think might be of interest to you to kind of go and work with. With It might be sort of an, a, an element of the industry that you think that once you graduate, you'll be interested in going out to sort of start your career. So, um, and we, we help you sort of make contact with those people and you develop some rapport with them via you know communications and then these these companies might be australian based they might be internationally based we have some um, scholarship money around that um, can enable you to travel overseas and spend some time with companies of your choice so that's the course in a nutshell um, and now i think it's time um, to bring in my uh, alumni, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'll invite in my alumni, uh, Kieran Dew, Taylor Hill, Ryan Drum, and Grace Lanwarn, and we'll invite you to ask questions via the chat if you like, and we'll endeavour to um, expand on what I've kind of just said. We've got until... Um, 11.30, I think. Um, okay. Hi, Grace. How are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I'll just have a look in the chat here and see whether we've got anyone. No, not yet. No. Um, <laughs> is there anybody out there? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah there are everybody. some people out there, so feel free. Oh. How are you going, guys? Good to see you all. Hey, Hi, Lynn. How are you going? <laughs> hey, Karen, Ryan, Taylor, and Gray. Very good. Okay, so this is for everybody out there in Zoom world. This is Lindsay Brown. She's a lecturer here um, at NIDA. Um, I, was gonna, I thought we might sort of start off this conversation. Um, you know, if there's people out there watching, what they might be interested in is, is this the kind of, is this the sort of course that... Um, I'm, I'm really interested in kind of going in doing and I was going to ask you guys to maybe kind of talk about what you were doing before you applied at NIDA, you applied to NIDA and, and you know what kind of drew you here I guess in a way. Um, 
Sure, I can kick that off if you like, Nick. Okay. Yeah. So I, um, so I was actually, I was actually the first student to do this course. Um, uh, So I was doing, I was actually doing a different. um, I was studying in Canberra, doing a teaching degree, and I was sort of working a bit in the theatre to sort of tie ends, make ends meet, and um, because I was sort of, you know, my background is sort of in theatre family wise but so I was working in the theatre down there and um, so Nick you yourself had contacted um, Dave Tongs who I was working for the head of the theatre and you start you were starting up this course at the time putting it together and um, it was sort of um, one of those like uh, is any you know it was a bit like is anybody out there and um, so uh, I and I'd sort of just sort of always been a bit interested in theatre and um, and all of a sudden, because it's, it's hard to sort of know that this is actually a thing that you can do. It's um, it's very easy to go, oh, look, that'd, that'd be nice, but you can't actually go, oh, can you actually make a career out of this? And it wasn't until you'd sort of contacted us and sort of said, you were setting this thing up. I was like, oh, you can actually do that. So I just sort of jumped straight on it and said, yeah, that's absolutely something I want to do and came up. Um, but so it was a bit of a, you know, um, bit of a career hard left for me <laughs> you know to actually kind of pursue theater properly but so yeah that was sort of what I was doing um if that uh, I don't know if that helps anybody or <laughs> you can do it <laughs> um, yeah, you, you was first, I was actually the second to second year to graduate with Joe Gleason my fellow compadre uh I came straight out of school so it wasn't quite, wasn't quite so much of a left-leaning career change for me. But I heard about this through uh, Jeremy Sparks, who's an engineer that works with the NIDA crew. And I was looking to be an engineer, but I also needed to have like a creative outlet that I found throughout my life. So being able to also study arts as well as, you know, fulfilling my kind of drawing and drafting and you know engineered solutions to problems this ended up just being the perfect course that popped up at the perfect time and you know here i am got a, <laughs> got a career out of it right <laughs> also if anybody's got any work done like <laughs> <laughs> um i've got a question here from melissa asking is if mathematics is a big part of scenic construction what's your take on that grace <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yes, I would say yes. Um, I mean, you've got to kind of do a lot of quick addition or subtraction, um, <laughs> but every, everyone has a phone and there's a calculator on your phone, I guess. So that makes it very easy. But yes, mathematics is um, a big part of what we do. We also have programs that help support that maths as well. So it's not hard, but it's definitely an element of, of what we study. Melissa, um, I actually asked the exact same question when I um, <laughs> went to the open day because I dropped maths in year 10 and had no intention of doing anything mathematical. Um, but obviously the lectures help you through everything and you've got, um, like you said, some programs to help you out. Like I'm, I'll put my hand up. I'm terrible at maths, um, but I got through it. So you can too. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, what about um, as far as your, your the journey into the course, Grace? Or uh, Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, I'm the most recent graduate. Um, so I was in third year last year. Um, and I actually came from Canberra as well. Um, I was studying aeronautical engineering in college in Canberra. Um, and I was doing some work at the theatre down there as well. Um, and then I just really wanted to not do that anymore. Uh, and then I did some Googling and found a diploma course at NIDA. So I kind of used that as a springboard to get out of Canberra to do something different. Uh, that was the live production, diploma of live production that NIDA does. And then through that, I found the bachelor's degree as well. And then as soon as I... I uh, discovered that, knew that that was what I wanted to do, what I wanted to study, what I wanted to continue doing for the rest of my life. And then I applied and uh, 
here we are now. <laughs> and you came out of high school too, didn't you, Tay? You were, um... Yeah, I was um, straight out of high school. I actually stumbled upon NIDA kind of by accident. I was actually across the road um, going to do a landscape architecture degree at UMSW <laughs> um, and went to the open day. It just happened to stumble across the open day and I sat in... Um, Nick's lecture about this course and quickly changed my mind quick smart and applied to <laughs> do this staging degree which is a total flip but I'm really glad I've done it because I've done some amazing things with my degree and um, love my job yeah <laughs> cool. so the other thing I was going to sort of ask as a talking point was so so you kind of get into the course and I mean, some people kind of you know you know project oh this is what I'm going to do afterwards but um, did anybody kind of like change during the duration of the course? Did, did, did sort of uh, the breadth of the course, I guess, um, open up areas that you kind of never thought of you'd see yourself doing at the beginning of the course? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that for me it did. Um, like I, I mean, I sort of came into the course thinking, you know, I, I sort of like, uh, you know, construction and like you know stage um like stage technician stuff is what i wanted to be doing and then when i was sort of about halfway through i really discovered automation and i thought you know that's something that uh, i i hadn't come across and then really decided that was worth pursuing um so that, and that was like uh, it was great to sort of go through that you know develop that through the masterwork and then go um and the secondment you know, going overseas and doing automation work in Europe and then coming back and I was working through that, through uh, one of the lecturers that I had um, for um, for Jan's designing um, stage machinery for theatres. You know, that, that was like, you know, again, it was just sort of this path of, you know, you just got to keep taking that next step and you don't know where it's going to end up. But So absolutely, you know, it's sort of, there's a lot, there's so much freedom to do that inside the course for sure. Anybody else got an opinion on that one? Yeah, I definitely did as well. I um, came into it um, with the construction mindset, thinking that I would be building, and I certainly have, but it was only until kind of the last year I kind of went into more of the construction management and production management of it all and um, kind of found I actually really liked doing the costings and the schedulings and um, everything around the prepare, like preparation for um, some of the big builds. And that's kind of where I've ended up in my career as well. So, yeah. And I've got a bit you... of a flip on that. I, I came in and I wanted to do all the kind of cool, magical stage machinery stuff. And when I originally got there, I'd only really picked up a hammer to like hang pictures on the wall kind of thing. And so when I got introduced to using grinders and welders to build steel structures, it was all very daunting and scary. And I didn't really enjoy it at first, but now looking back on it, like seeing my workmanship progress over, uh, you know, the three years I was there, I ended up really falling in love with it and <laughs> you know the ability to like create something out of just steel that arrives off a truck and then all of a sudden you've got this lovely you know amazing piece of thing that you've made i uh i couldn't really imagine my career right now without having those skills as well so i kind of knew what i wanted to do but then also fell in love with all this extra stuff that i didn't really want to do <laughs> but now it's a big part of me Yes, yeah, so I guess now you kind of find that um, the fabrication skills you learnt inform your design skills within the automation, like how, you know, you, you're designing things that people can then make, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. <laughs> you've got that in the back of your head as you're drawing kind of thing, how it would be made and, and put together on site. Yeah, that's the big one. The whole yeah, your first design's very backwards, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not until you have to put it together when, uh, when you know, you're 20 feet in the air going, oh, that doesn't fit in there. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, wouldn't do it like that, mate. <laughs> cool. And so, um, 
since you since you've left, what's 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 everybody been up to? What? Um... Well, I'm. Um, so I uh, yeah, as, as I was saying, I went overseas, came back, and I was working for Jans. Um, parted ways with them, went overseas again, had another bit of trip around. I came back, and now I'm working for. Um, so, so now I'm a, a leading technician at Opera Australia. Uh, doing the shows in um, Sydney and Melbourne, uh, so we do the you know four seasons a year, um, and which is which is great, and it's sort of you know something I've now settled into uh, for the foreseeable, I think, um, and yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what I'm doing. Where you know, it's uh, it's really interesting. It's like you know, it's one of those we get we have a lot of shows that we you know we've got a very large repertoire of shows, so you're always sort of doing something different. Um, and we're turning stuff over constantly. So it's like, you know, there's a real, it's nice to be sort of challenged every day in that way. You know, it's, you're not, um, doing the same thing every day. It's always pushing you in a different direction. Um, so that's sort of, you know, that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah. So just, just to sort of maybe sort of expand on that a little bit, just for, um, the folks out there that might not be so uh, knowledgeable of the industry mm -hmm. as a whole, there's, your work are you, you doing sort of show calls as part of your work style? yeah yeah so the way that um so i'm doing show calls yeah so the way that our like our setup works is that so the so the workshop will build a set and then they'll send it to us and we our job is to take it to the theater we put it together um do the shows pull it apart and the way that an opera season works is that so we'll do about maybe six shows in a season but we'll have uh, we'll have about three in the house, in the building at, at a time. So uh, at the opera house, there's a big, um, you know, there's a big open level downstairs from the stage. And so we'll keep three shows down there um, and one show up on stage. And so you're kind of coming in in the morning, you put the, the morning show on or the rehearsal, and then you have to pull all of that out, change it over to the evening show. And you kind of constantly swapping from one to two to four to two to one to you know whatever the schedule is and it's always sort of a different process of how do you how do you attack that to get that one out and pull that one in and move that around and push that in there and yeah yeah especially in tight theaters like the opera house it's a bit of a tetris mm. uh, thing from time to time because there's not much space even down in the scene dock down there absolutely not a lot of space and that's and this for the fact that uh, um, looking in from outside that's uh, due to the fact that opera singers can't sing two shows one after the other. That's right. They need to kind of turn the, the repertoire around every day sort of thing. And, you know, so they'll have rehearsals for the upcoming show in the afternoons and then change over into the evening show. And then sometimes do ch strike that show and do a setup for lighting or something in the evening. So it can be the cycle can be um, daunting at times. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, obviously we, um, you know, we've uh, had our plans kind of canceled at the moment. But um, like one thing that uh, the company's been focusing on in the last couple of years is that we've developed a sort of digital program. So a digital kind of framework where, you know, we've got some, uh, we've put together this sort of, um, you know, automation architecture that's got some sort of moving LED system and uh, a revolving stage and stuff so that we can kind of do a lot of new work with, um, with tighter turnarounds and that sort of thing. So we can, go, okay, we're going to put on a new show, but instead of having an entire castle, we're going to, you know, put in some scenic elements on these panels and have some stuff that's smaller stuff that we can work together. So, that, you know, so that we can sort of get a lot more freedom around that. And, um, but yeah, so we were supposed to be down in Melbourne um, until a few weeks ago and looking at the, the way that it was going to be down there, it was going to be absolutely like coming in in the morning, do all that, and then as soon as the show's over, you know, get the third crew in and it'll be changing over until, you know, three o'clock in the morning even or something, you know, to make everything happen. And, you know, so it's a, big, it's a big job and it's a lot of, you know, a lot of hard working, a lot of hard work from a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a 24-7 industry we're kind of working in and various people choose to work in various bits of it, you know? Um, so your, uh, say it, um, simple motion, Kieran, that in the automation build area, it's a sort of like different kind of timetable, isn't it? Yeah, it's, we decided to start making a shift from predominantly 
like theatrical work maybe two years ago when I started working there. So we started off by doing a couple installations. We did a vivid installation and we started uh, building automated printer trolleys for a printing company and, you know, kind of making the distance from theater into a more commercial thing has kind of paid off for us because obviously the theater shows go in seasons, like you heard Ryan talking about their opera season. And so for building, it's, you kind of build for the season. And then once it starts, you've got some passive income. And then once it's finished, unless there's a new show coming up, you don't really have that kind of income coming through. So we've actually been really lucky to get into the opera house doing some maintenance at the moment, because unfortunately, even though all the shows are canceled, it's now a really good time to come in and do maintenance because you can make as much noise as you want and the actors on stage and the directors aren't going to be too angry with you. <laughs> so um, it's a very much in terms of the building, it's like a, we, you know, we start at seven 30 and we finish at four o'clock just to kind of get all the building done in terms of, we use a lot of modern techniques like laser cutting and uh, we have a, crowd out in thing that do a lot of our folding and they're really good at laser cutting different materials and still folding them very accurately and you know kind of cutting down on production i mean manufacturing time because i'm me and another person are the only people that are building stuff there so in terms of being able to get like a test in and then push the final product out we can kind of save time by getting a machine to cut the 30 holes instead of me having to drill them all day <laughs> and uh you know, from there, it then becomes the installation. So recently we've been working in the opera house. We replaced the drama theater hoist in the uh, drama theater. So it's to lift the really heavy, I think it's like 20 meters across. It's like a curved bar that's used to lift up and up and down. And so uh, the, last, the last time I went down there, all of our machinery was in there but it was replaced the other week. And then all the stuff that came out was from like the sixties. So it was like all out <laughs> outdated kind of stuff. And it was all really, really heavy. Yeah. So part of the problem is, okay, well, we have to replace everything from there. We have to remove it from the room safely upstairs, downstairs through all the Sydney opera house corridors to get out into the, to get out into the theater and into the loading dock. And then we have to bring all of our heavy stuff in as well. So it's not just we build stuff. It's also like implementing it on site. And then all of this week we were commissioning it. So that's just uh, doing a lot of load testing and ensuring all of our safety protocols are in line so that, you know, if some person's upstairs and they press the button, but some person downstairs also presses the other button, it doesn't completely twang itself and, you know, making it as easy to use as possible. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we are very lucky to still be at work at the moment, kind of pushing for these more commercial maintenance jobs and, and stuff like that. Right. And now, uh, Grace, you're the, you're the, you've been out the, the shortest period of everybody. You only kind of graduated yeah. at the end of the year kind of thing. And you, you originally um, went off and started working with Pollards, didn't you, who are a production rigging company. Yeah, uh, so when I finished NIDA, I did go straight and worked with Pollards, uh, which does not only theatre uh, rigging, but they do kind of all the arena rigging as well, mostly arena rigging in Sydney for all the big rock shows that come through Sydney. Uh, so I was working very consistently with them and their, their hours are a bit weird, uh, so because we're the first in and last, to, the riggers are the first in and last to leave. Um, we'd be there at 6, 7 a.m. to do a four-hour call and get uh, all the points hung in the venue and then be back at uh, 10, 11 p.m. To, uh, when the show finishes to get everything out for the turnaround, which is usually the next day as well. So it's a really high turnaround uh, for rock shows. Um, in Sydney and they do, so I was doing that uh, pretty solidly for, for a good three months, as well as working casually as a mechanist uh, for Sydney Theatre Company and a few of the other venues around town as well. Okay. 
So when we talk when we talk about rigging, kind of you know, yes. like people kind of think of rigging. They kind of think of ships or something, I suppose, or or whatever. But so like in the case of something like <laughs> like pollards, rigging kind of takes on like a different kind of. Uh, uh, it's a it's a, it's a whole it's a, like an environmental thing, isn't it? It's like yeah, yeah. Uh, so we predominantly did point rigging, which is um, climbing to the roof of a venue and hanging chain motors. So that truss could be uh, hung off those chain motors. So, you know, we'd go along and just basically haul up chains and hang them on um, structural beams in venues um, and just go along and do all that point rigging so that the truss monkeys can come along and um, uh, assemble truss and then hang it off all the points that we put right. in. So, so with, say with an outdoors gig, for instance, um, do pollards also create, do they also kind of do truss structures in order to kind of like make points, you know, in those sort of outdoors sort of areas or? Uh, I've never done an outdoor gig oh, with, with them, but I, I, um, I, I believe they do. Like a lot of truss and everything in their warehouse. Yeah, like, they do. Mm. Yeah. So they do hire out a lot of truss for, um, the events that they do, yeah. but usually we'll get, uh, companies like show call or, um, yeah, Australian that. crewing to kind of yeah. come in and assemble oh. and yeah. yeah. So they do hire out truss, yeah. uh, and for the outdoor gigs, I do believe that they do provide trussing for, yeah. for all of that as well. What about you, Tay? I mean, you kind of um, left here and kind of went straight on into Stage Kings. What sort of, uh, what kind of work were you doing with them and what, what was the requirements time-wise in that industry? Yeah, so um, my, actually, I actually seconded with a company called Stage Kings and then from there, once I graduated, NIDA, I started working full-time with them. So um, I did some really awesome builds for some festival shows and theatre shows. So I, straight out of NIDA, did the opening and closing ceremonies for the Commonwealth Games. I did the builds for that. And then I've done things like the Pop-Up Globe and um, the Edinburgh Tattoo and lots of music festivals, some doof doof ones out in the bush. Um, so I've um, basically travelled all over... Um, Australia putting in different festivals but for the most time being in the workshop it's very the hours were very much start at seven in the morning finish at 3 30 in the afternoon um, obviously the builds like when we were there bumping in um, they were pretty long <laughs> um, sometimes doing some 24 hour 48 hour builds <laughs> but that's okay um, they were so much fun anyway so I really enjoyed it um, and then, yeah, so we did some some pretty awesome and amazing things and I've only just left Stage Kings. Um, and now I'm with a kind of like an event management company as specialising in their like construction management. So I'm kind of back pulling, um, like organising everything and then when I'm on site, again, pulling those big hours to ensure everything looks amazing for events and um, festivals and shows yeah <laughs> fantastic yes is it that we have, we've only it's just uh, melissa's the only person who's asked a question what about oliver or izzy have you got anything you'd like to ask the guys have you got no, <laughs> no. <laughs> don't want a part of it <laughs> um oh here we go just taking it all in from you um, oh, um, so there is a lot yeah it is a, really, a lot going on yeah and it is a really fun course like I loved my three years at NIDA like um, there might not be very many people in your particular year but like I got to share you know um, my three years with every single person here and we've built really strong relationships so mm. you know, it's um, definitely a course that you should look forward to and so, yeah, I mean, in that kind of vein of the business being, you know, creative collaboration between a whole sort of bunch of people, um, what was that experience like, you know, as a student cohort, um, as a place to sort of spend a few years? Is, uh, is it, does everybody kind of have fond memories of, of that side of the course? 
or otherwise? I mean, <laughs> no, absolutely. Like everybody was really easy to work with, good community. Like you know, and it's a, you know it can be everybody sort of experiences it in a bit of a different way, you know. Um, but it, it, everybody's really helpful. Like you don't ever feel like you're, you can't talk to anybody or you're isolated or, and that's, you know, the other students and the teaching staff as well. Like everybody supports everybody all the way through. And I guess, you know, to that end, um, I, it must be kind of said that we quite, um, as opposed to sort of maybe other tertiary institutions, we've got pretty incredible teacher to student kind of ratios. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially for our, especially for this course. Um, in my year, there were only two of us that were that, that were in the year. So, that, you know, we had more tutors than students. So there's always kind of someone there to talk to for help, for any sort of support or advice on anything that we were doing. And I know, so with you, you had a particular kind of thing, Grace, for circus when you... Um... <laughs> The kind of yeah, circle, I guess in a way towards the rigging thing. Um, yeah, I still have a particular thing for circuits. <laughs> um, so I seconded <laughs> with Cirque du Soleil at the end of um, last year with uh, Kyros when I was in Sydney and had the most amazing experience there. And I do genuinely believe that these skills that I learnt and picked up and developed through this course helped me have such a successful secondment. Um, like I was running a show track for a Cirque show as a secondment there. And I do believe that it was this course that helped me get there and be able to do that. Um, so it does, it does lead to some really amazing possibilities uh, with some really amazing companies. Right. I mean, it is kind of a fun, it's always a funny thing, I think, you know, with uh, the secondments is that, you know, you guys go out into the industry and um, and the industry responds sort of going, well, you know, these guys are so well kind of uh, set up kind of thing for the, for, the, for the industry. And then you guys are sort of always sort of going, well, it's just like at school, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Which is kind of a nice thing. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice kind of feedback, and it's a, it's, it's good to know that uh, that uh, we're still kind of teaching things that are relevant, I guess. Um, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's useful too. Like um, I remember we were doing for Stage Kings a float for Mardi Gras, and they wanted um, rounded platforms, and someone was like, "Does anyone know how to bend steel?" And I was like. <laughs> I definitely do. <laughs> I was like, I did it for about yeah. a year. And I called that week and I was like, you have to bend up. <laughs> and I went in there and bended some steel and welded up these platforms and they looked amazing. Like, um, thank goodness I got taught how to do that at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Has anybody else got any kind of interesting stories from their kind of secondment? out, you know, their first forays into the industry? Hmm. Oh, I'm just, you I, you know, I mean. <laughs> were you, did you end up like in, in um, cruise ships in Rotterdam or sort of something? Like that was, that was the time, wasn't it? That was a fun one. So I was, yeah, so I got, um, I got hooked up with um, this guy in Germany who uh, does, he's got his own sort of automation company over there and he does all these kinds of installations and shows and all sorts of stuff. And I've been over there a couple of times with him. And um, yeah, so it was a bit, it was quite a culture shock when I got over there that sort of, you know, get there, you know, doing a, doing a couple of bits and pieces, whatever. And all of a sudden, yeah, then we got shipped off to go and do these cruise ships. So, you know, um, you know, and you think working on a cruise ship, oh, so, you, you know, you're, you're doing the um, the show on the water. No, 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 no. This was the building the cruise ships. <laughs> so uh, all of a sudden you just rock up at this hangar that's like, you know, long enough that you can get two P&O cruise liners end to end. And there's no, <laughs> and, um, you know, and it's all cranes and heavy machinery and everything. And it was like, 
you know, it was just crazy. Like it was something that I'd never sort of expected to ever see in my life. I was, you know, and they, it's, yeah, it's wild. They have this whole thing and, you know, and then you watch, they um, have like, uh, you know, well, they build one ship per year. That's the whole industry of this town. They build one ship per year and they have this big festival where, you know, when it's, when it's finished, they open the floodgates, pick the thing up on the water and then it goes down the river and all this stuff. And it's, yeah, it was just, that was, for me, was something, you know, I'll, I'll always remember that because, yeah, like I said, I never would have thought I'd do it. And, um, and it's quite funny every now and again, actually, if you go, um, if you go and hang out at um, Circular Quay, you know, I've seen that ship come in like 10 or 15 yeah. times. And I'm like, oh, I worked on that ship. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice thing. It's, a, it's an interesting, yeah, I guess. And it's kind of one of the interesting things about the industry, I suppose, in that, in that shows are always about something, you know, what shows can be about anything, whether, you know, if it's a theater show or, or film or, or, you know, events and exhibitors and people like that, you kind of bump into and just the, the, uh, the stories can kind of come from kind of anywhere. So there's always that element to the industry where you're kind of like learning about something new, even if it's kind of like, you know, just the narrative of the show you're working on, or it could be sort of some particular kind of technologies or something that are just part of this kind of one instance, you know, um, even it's involved, oh, this set's made out of tons of gravel or, <laughs> and it involves earth moving machinery rather than saws and welding. It's all just different technologies to kind of create whatever, um, whatever it is you, you need to build. Um, you're always kind of, you know, learning and, 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 and developing new skills as you sort of go along, um, which then sort of, you know, obviously kind of then goes to helping the uh, sustainability of a career in that, you know, people kind of like Tay's instance, you know, like, can anybody here world? I can. <laughs> so there's always that, you know, that, that instance of, of uh, being able to kind of apply yourself to any kind of problem that might be out there. Um, well, um, Nobody's got any more kind of questions. Has anybody got anything that they'd like to, they think that they'd like to say to the people out there that are kind of watching that, you know, a little message from past students? Yeah, look, I mean, I'd just say um, it's, it's really amazing. It's a great course. The freedom that you get is awesome. Um, and you kind of really get to flex, you know, and I think uh, you get to flex your kind of problem solving um, that was that's sort of, sort of the big thing that comes out of it is that you learn more than anything how to sort of put you you know push yourself a bit um, find a problem find your own solution to it you know sort of work out your own path you know it's really freeing and it was and it's really great it's well supported for people to find themselves and do that for their own uh, kind of path rather than you know you don't feel like everyone is just banging on you about learn this, learn this. It's about what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that kind of sounds almost there's a, 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 a um, not so much a question, but a statement here um, <laughs> from Izzy, I think it is, uh, who grew up in Canberra and, you know, wants to develop uh, knowledge in crafting, making, understanding different materials and order to actualize in order to actualize concepts so i guess what um uh, ryan just kind of said then uh, applies to that and uh, melissa's asked um how many courses are you able to do at night or at one time <laughs> one <laughs> one in, in the, no, i do more the, than the, one <laughs> the courses the courses uh in the, the courses nine to six monday to friday and then when we're in production you can add Saturday to that and a few evenings as well. So it's a very intensive course. It's these courses are much more intensive than your average university course. So I think most people can kind of just manage the one. <laughs> In fact, yeah. I, I think I've never heard of anybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I could speak to that, Nick, if you don't mind, just, just quickly, because um, I think it's, it's a great question because I think you come onto a course like this sometimes a bit unsure about where your kind of direction is and you're not quite sure if it's you know in particular carpentry or welding or um that it is you're kind of interested in and you know and sometimes we've had students that have come in 
that have shown a real interest in, um, you know, like working in um, tactile textures and, and um, you know, been interested in scenic art. And we, and we put projects into the course as well that allow you to, to, to experiment as well in scenic painting, for example. Or um, So I think it's, it's, a, it's a good point because sometimes, you know, you're not quite sure where you want to kind of direct your, your interest. So coming in as, as, you know, as the scenic construction course doesn't specifically mean you're just going to build sets. I think we, you know, we have a structure to the course, but we can also um, kind of guide it and uh, adapt it to your development and your own, your own learning. Um, so although it's just the one course you're actually coming in for, it's, it, it, it kind of feels like more than just the one course. You, you know, you can get into other departments. You, we collaborate a lot with props, for example, the props department especially on um, productions, because sometimes there's a gray area between is it a prop or is it set? So it's like, you know, we do a lot of collaborating with other, other departments as well. So it's, it's, it's great to kind of have that interest. Um, but predominantly at the end of the course, you'll be graduating just with one, one, with one you know, with one diploma or de degree, sorry. Hmm. Um, well, that's a question. question. <laughs> oh, there's another question here from Izzy saying, yeah. do you feel confident that the skills you gained through this course well prepared you for working in the industry? Uh, 100%. Absolutely. I think Definitely, if anything, yeah. they went above and beyond. Like, so many people that I work with have no idea how to do certain <laughs> elements. And I'm like, how do you not know how to do this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, they always look at me with the girl with the big eyelashes going sure show me how to do this um but yeah it's it definitely over prepares you for everything in all aspects and I think it's too like for for example for me like um I didn't necessarily go into anything that's got um, mechanical engineering or anything along those lines but I have basic knowledge of how to use that information. So if it ever comes in handy, like I'll know how to do it <laughs> because I learned it at um, university. It's just like a really all rounder course. Hmm. And I, uh, ah, so amazing, thank you for me. <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> and you know, to that question also, when, the, when we first created the course, we had a course advisory group, which was um, a number of professionals from the industry who came in and sort of said, well, okay, here's the kind of things we should sort of do. And, and one of the ideas that came from that initial discussion was that notion that uh, the industry really needed people with a broad view that could kind of go um, in, find a problem and then work their way from like, you know, the interface of the computer through the actuating mechanisms, through the machine, down to the structure of the set kind of thing and, and problem solve all the way through a system kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, obviously especially kind of useful if, you know, they're going to have to put somebody on a plane and send them to Macau to kind of sort something out. It's, it's good for that person to kind of have as, a broader knowledge of, of what they're going to be looking at as possible. So. So that was kind of one of the initial ideas that um, prompted the actual kind of design of the course. So I'm glad you all kind of sort of said yes when uh, that question came up. So that's good. Um, so anything else? Let me have a look here. No. Uh -huh. um, well, look, I'll say, you know, you know, thank you to all you chaps. So, Taylor, Ryan, Kieran, Grace, thanks for sort of giving up um, an hour of your day on Saturday. Oh, it's and a pleasure. My pleasure. It was nice seeing everyone again. It is, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Hello, all. We should Zoom more. Really? Yeah, great to see you all. <laughs> really good. We didn't hear much from Oliver, but I'm not quite sure if he's still there or not. But um, <laughs> thank, yeah, thanks to Melissa and Izzy and Oliver too for, for coming on. And, you know, if we're going to have uh, a 15-minute kind of break now, but Linz and Florian, our rigging and stage machinery lecturer, and myself will be back around at 
12.15 for any other questions. If you sort of walk away and, um, and think is something I should have asked, then we'll be online here in the Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting to answer any other questions you might have. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Well, I think Oliver just did say thank you. So great to hear more about the course. It sounds amazing. So glad to, glad well, to. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, Oliver? If there's anything you're unsure of, feel free to, to be in touch with us directly. I'm sure there's some system that's set up for the guys to be in touch. That's right. And there's if on the on the uh, staging page on the NIDA website, there's our, our contacts and stuff. So, and when the COVID situation kind of gets better, we're quite open to people just kind of wandering, or not just wandering in, but giving us a call and coming around and having a look at the facilities and and maybe talking with the students who are on the deck here now, and, and that's uh, more than welcome once uh, the COVID restrictions get um, are, are lifted. So look forward to hearing from you all down the line, and uh, thank you for sort of zooming in this morning. Thanks, guys. That's fine. Thanks for having thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank, thank you, you for, for this. having us all, yeah. Okay.